Good morning, folks. Eyes on Mercury. It's been almost 30 days we've eagerly anticipated this solar conjunction. Let's slow it down. Mercury and Sun conjoined yesterday morning a matter of minutes before a massive earthquake struck the Bonin Islands region of Japan. Initial magnitude readings all came in at 8.5, but smaller ones did trickle in. Buoys were set off, but to the tune of centimeters only, so no significant tsunami took place. The USGS downgraded to 7.8. You can see a significant aftershock as well. Simultaneously listed quakes in New Zealand and the United States were removed from the list because no one felt them, and no actual shaking took place that far away. The deep tremor in Japan just set them off from across the globe. How deep? Very deep. Stephen Shaw posted this yesterday, and I found it to be an interesting read. We've had deeper quakes than the one yesterday but not really at this high a magnitude. Back in 2013, when Russia had an 8.3 around 600 kilometers down, it was said to be the largest ever at that depth. This one was deeper and ranged from 7.8 to 8.5. Interesting also to learn that the deepest quake ever recorded was likely a transcription error. While I'm on the topic of quakes, how about a newly discovered tsunami threat for Southern California? Most believe that the on-land fault zone there makes it less susceptible than areas with subductions offshore, but it turns out there are threats at sea down there. So why didn't I start with the sun today? Well, if the planetary quake coincidence wasn't enough for you, how about the fact that our star is very calm, nothing going on to speak of. The departing northern megafilament is beginning to quiver upon its exit, and the southern rope should lift off soon as well, all of them waiting until after they've faced Earth. Anyone care to guess on the solar flares? Slim pickings once more. Same with the solar wind, which remains utterly calm, and Earth's protective shield barely lifts a finger at the moment. There was a gamma ray burst yesterday morning, came out of Cepheus, and at some point during the last day, Earth's magnetic connectivity began jumping back from the departing northern coronal hole, just one connection point at first. Top articles today are climate-based. First, one of my favorite researchers, John Christie, has once again completed his task of comparing every single official global warming prediction with what we have observed since the predictions were made. I first shared his work on this with last year's chart, and here's the new one. Folks, this is the global warming pause, the two decades of failed predictions, etc., etc. Learn more from the good doctor, link below. Also this, related to yesterday's special report, which if you didn't watch, go back. It was a worthwhile 10 minutes. But there are indeed growing glaciers up north as well. The Arctic is bounced back from the record low ice totals, but it's still way below average and relatively in trouble. Ears open. Membership price is due to go up tomorrow, but until all support emails sent before then get hit, the price will remain lower. So I suppose you can snag that lower membership price for a couple more days. By the way, we dissected Jade Helm in yesterday's Fly on the Wall episode. It was fun. However, this is absolutely the final day of pre-registration for Observing the Frontier. First Observers Conference will be in Pittsburgh this October. Also, watch for announcements at the January 2016 conference in Phoenix. Hurricane here. Not going to hit land, but it and the low to the north are relevant rainmakers for the coastlines at the shear points. Top alerts here, however, come to Pennsylvania tonight and the surrounding areas as the convergence will likely drop a tornado somewhere in this area tonight. Over in Europe, you see the large loop around one low with its partner Earth spot over to the right. Not as worried about that one, but Weather shares from the islands would be greatly appreciated. Convergence cutting down towards Antarctica actually pushes its clouds to northern New Zealand, while the northern and western portions of the bend back across Australia, that's where the convergence where the clouds can be found up there. We've got the current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.